afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, we're back. Took a couple of days working on um, proper project work. We're back. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I have done some work on this lace off stream. It was really getting on my nerves. Um, I was having a lot of difficulty making it. It was just like so close, but so far, like getting it in the right spot and everything. Um, so I decided to, and it was very boring because I was trying to concentrate really hard on getting it correct. It's still not really that correct. It's pretty loose and loosey goosey, but that might actually help with the, uh, make it look more realistic. That might help. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I didn't want to spend loads of time on it. It was just, it's not fun to watch really. It was really, really boring. It basically just me like dragging my hair out, even though I don't really have much hair anyway, <laughs> uh, to try and get it to, uh, in the right spot. And I wasn't talking because I was concentrating so hard and stuff, so. It's still pretty messed, but it's definitely in a much better spot than it was, that's for sure, so. Alright, so, um, what I want to do is clean out this. If this is, like, clipping a little bit, I actually will just fix it in post, post-production, to be honest with you. Uh... Can't really be bothered to try and fix it here. To be honest with you. Checking that. So yeah, I've got a little bit left to do in the last part. I did the majority of it off stream. Um it was just basically exactly what I was doing at the end of last episode. Just literally what I'm doing right now. Just going through and editing every vertice. Um, to try and make it actually look correct. An absolute ball ache to be honest with you. Alright. What I want to do now. Um, we're going to start to render it so basically I'm gonna make a YouTube video out of this um, but the render is it's gonna be done uh, actually first of all I did want to make this a little bit wider if I take, um, Yeah, I guess that's enough. Um, a little bit. Yeah, so three ways I'm going to render this Jordan 1 shoe that I've created that I've just spent time on doing these series for, which you can check out down below. There's a playlist series of me going through and modeling this shoe. Uh, it's not 100% complete the shoe, but uh, we're going to start working on the uh, lighting and rendering now just so we can see what it looks like under lighting because that gives us a better idea of what to change in terms of materials. Um, and color and things so um, I'm going to start rendering it now so the first render I'm going to do is a white clean background almost product page style second render I'm going to do is a more uh, stylish website banner uh, product uh, page sort of cinematic style more like than the sort of like um, checkout page um, render which is going to have like a colored background with a gradient in the background more cinematic light and stuff and then the third one is going to be, I'm going to superimpose the shoe onto a, I don't even know if superimpose is the right word, but I'm going to put the shoe on a, a real life photo. So, um, try to get it into an environment where it looks like it's in a real life image, um, as best as I can. So first one, we're going to put it in a white background. So first of all, we're going to hide these. We're going to make a new sync lighting. 
And that scene, we're going to add a plane. Um, first of all, we're going to drag our whole shoe. And we're going to line it up so it's there. Um, and then we're going to take this plane that I made, which uh, is actually over there for some reason. Um, and then we're going to make scale it up pretty much. After we've scaled it up to about here, we're going to go in the object settings, uh, visibility. Nope. Uh, first, oh yeah, change render to cycles. All right, so this is the way that I would set up a product render which has a pure white background, just like this one on the screen now, um, which would be used likely for Amazon products on a product page. You know when you, you're on a website and you go in the checkout page and um, you want something really professional and clean where the background is infinite, infinite white, um, not much going on really. Uh, so render engine is cycles for this. Uh, color management, you want to change view transform to standard. This is really important to get the uh, completely white look rather than it being slightly gray. Uh, look, it changes depending on the model, but anywhere between medium and high contrast to very high contrast is what I use. For now, let's try high contrast, um, and then we can change that later. Everything else keep the same. Mm, yeah, I probably should actually. So let me what I want to do, I want to make this into a video. So let me start again from the top. Let me start again from the top. Um, and then press record this time. It's not quite... So the first way that I would render a product, uh, what I'm going to show in this video, the three ways to render a product, is going to be the white background. This is going to be used sort of on a, a product page, a sort of image, a pure white background, infinite, which is the key thing. Um, not very distracting. Something that you do use on um, Amazon, um, or if it's more of a professional product render rather than a stylish or sort of fashion style one. Um, so first thing I'm going to do inside my environment is so this this is this is our model that we're going to use. It's not complete yet. The uh, materials are definitely not there yet. Um, but what I need, I need to put it in a photorealistic environment um, with the right lighting and the right background, so that I can then see what the materials actually look like in that environment. Because I can't go changing the uh, color of this red and texture of the laces and stuff right now because we're just in the material preview um, it's not really going to do much for us the screen's frozen okay can we go back now can we go back now yeah okay um, so first thing to change is to hit this icon here render properties um, go to render engine cycles uh, from here Go down to color management, display device, sRGB should already be on that. View transform needs to be on standard rather than the default, which is filmic. This is really important to get the clean white background. You're never going to get pure white um, with filmic. You might get kind of near pure white, but you have to set up so many lights and stuff. Standard is the wave. Um, look, you want to go high contrast. Um, depending on your model, though, medium high might look better or very high might look better. Usually, I always work between medium high to very high. Everything else keep the same. Uh, we're going to make a new collection called lighting. Um, and then we're going to add a plane with shift A and then up to plane. Seven on the number keypad to go in the top view. And we're going to drag it to the middle of our product and press S to scale it up and drag. About here is fine. Honestly, it doesn't matter too much as long as it's uh, obviously larger than the object. Head to this orange one here which is the object properties head to visibility and under mask you want to check shadow catcher so basically this changes this face this uh this plane um, in our viewpoint is not going to be visible it's going to be turned into a mask 
and it's going to catch the shadows of the light so that we get shadows uh, on the ground um, as if the model is sitting on a plane but we don't actually see the plane all right next step will probably be for us to set up our camera because we don't actually have one um, you've probably already got a camera in your environment but if you don't shift a camera um, we're going to take this now i'm not actually sure what angle i want to do so i'm just going to press zero to select it shift f to free fly and just pick a random Yeah, we could try that. We could do this. Yeah, we could try that. Yeah, that's good. All right, so um, obviously, as I said, the model is not complete yet. I don't have logos on the front of the shoe and on the side. Um, and the lace is a little bit dirt, like not clean. And um, the front, these like circular feature is not finished yet but i need to see my shoe in uh, my model my shoe whatever you want to call it in the i need to see it in the environment where the lighting is correct so that i can change the features such as a logo so there's no point putting it on yet so this will do for now it's pretty much i said this model is 90 90 complete maybe 85 percent complete um so this is the point where i would set up my lighting now so i can finish the last 15 percent off next step is um let's go into drill quick take a little screenshot of our model so this is our world tab screenshot of that and object Okay, so I'm doing this live on YouTube, live streaming it right now. If you want to subscribe, make sure you check out any live streams that I'm doing in the future. I'm super educational, super fun, chill, just going through uh, projects and doing them live pretty much. So you pretty much come along with the ride with all the problems that I have um, along the way and see how we can fix them also. Okay, so first step, we're going to shade and tab. We want to go to change the object to world. From here, you want to go add, or you can press Shift A, so it does the same thing. You want to add a texture coordinate, uh, also a mapping node, and plug it generated into the vector. From here, drag it along. You want to add an environment texture, plug the vector into the vector, and then you want to go get yourself from a website such as. One very good one is HDR Haven. You want to download yourself a nice studio lighting um, HDR I. Okay, so you just cl click this, click download in 4K, um, and then save it onto your computer. The one I'm using for this video is either going to be Photo Studio 01 or Studio Small 03, um, depending on which one looks better this is just to add a little bit more realistic lighting in the background we are going to turn it down a bit so it's not that visible um, but it just add, adds a little extra something <clears throat> from here uh, our next step so we're going to add our environment texture now so go to where you saved it on your computer mine are saved in here i'm going to try photo studio 01 select the background here and press shift d to duplicate it and put it below um, up top we're going to add a light path node this is almost finished now and down to here okay plug the environment texture into this background and then add a mix shader plop it here next to this background and plug the other one into the mix shader so we've got two backgrounds going into the mix shader last step right now is to take the light path go into is camera ray plug into the factor of the mix shader okay now what we want to do is we want to go back into our lighting collection and make our light this is completely optional um, it really depends on the project um, but for the this particular lighting um, I took 
this from a YouTube video. Um, both of these techniques are taken from YouTube videos from other people, so I'm going to link that in the description below. It's taken um, my technique for this is pretty much taken from uh, multiple YouTube videos tutorials that um, I picked up along the way that I mixed together to make my own method. Um, so I'm going to make a mesh and we're going to put it above above the shoe about here. We're going to make a mesh light. So we're going to new texture. We're going to name it by double clicking here. Light. Um, we're going to delete the principle BSDF. Um, we're going to make a a mission. We're going to add a diffuse. Put them next to each other. There. We're going to add a geometry node. And we're going to create a black body node. Okay, so pl plug the black body into the emission. Um, we're also going to need a mix shader now again, just to mix the diffuse and the emission. So emission into the top shader, diffuse into the bottom shader, shader into the surface. Um, and then we're also going to go up to this geometry node. We're going to go back facing and plug that into the factor. What that's going to do is that it's going to mean the light is going to emit only a out of one side of this plane rather than both. So cr essentially we're creating a, in real life photography world, a soft box light pretty much, um, where this side is not emitting light and this side is. So then we can rotate this around our environment, use it as a, as if you would a soft box light in real world. Now this is really important. You go to the black body and this is essentially changes the temperature of the light. What I found to be best to get a pure white light is a value of 27250, 7250. Um, and as you can see now we need to flip our plane using the rotation 180 on the Y um, because it was facing the wrong way. Let's go into cycles view and give it a minute to set up all the lighting in the scene. So changing this will change the temperature of the light. If you want a more warm temperature, you would reduce this black body node here, uh, which I can show you what it looks like if need be. Okay, so this is what we have. Um, problem we have right now is that if we go back into the world tab, the background here is the wrong color. We just basically select this and go up to white. Um, we probably want to go material view so my computer doesn't crash. Go back in and re render it in cycles. <coughs> And there we go. So as you can see, our light is too bright at the moment, um, but you can see we do have that quite literally infinite white background. This is what this world um, notes it up, which I will link to the original video below. Um, it's doing, it's essentially the whole world is white. Um, we do have a bit of the environment texture coming. I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. So if I uh, increase that, if, it, if the light wasn't so bright, you'd probably be able to see some changes to the uh, reflections and things. Um, for your project, that might make a big difference or not. Um, if you are if you plug this in and it's not completely white, you just need to bump up this background node. Um, but at a certain point, it just caps out because it's just as white as possible. But as you can see, if I make this 0.5, um, it will go slightly off white. So for us, I think one was perfectly fine. In terms of the brightness, um, all we need to do is go into the object and um, reduce the, essentially reduce, I'd say reduce the strength. Um, and that's, now it's almost just about playing around with what you have. As you see, as we've reduced that, that's made a nice little difference. I'd probably go back into the world tab, maybe reduce this. 
as you can see that's made a decent difference to the lighting um, because it's reduced the environment texture that we have 0.5 0.65. This is going to uh, really depend on your your model and what lighting you've set up for and everything. So let's give this a render see what it looks like. So obviously the textures are just not nice at the moment. That's because I haven't actually set up the materials too much yet. Um, but this is why I needed to set up this this lighting in this environment right now um, so that I can see what the materials look like in this environment so then I can change them so we're gonna do that after this let's see what this looks like first this is what I found to be the best way to create a pure white infinite background if you're really looking for there to be nothing in the background that shows that um, it's it's got like a plane in the background you just want it completely white as if it's on a product page on amazon or something this is what i've found to be the best way to do this and obviously it's very important to have that plane below the product with the shadow catcher because that what gives gives off the impression that it is still sitting on a uh, a floor essentially it still looks like it's sitting on a floor um, but it doesn't so much look you don't have to worry about like adding lights to the background of the plane to make it pure white. Um, there's no worries about that. So obviously we've got a little bit of overexposure here just where the white's connecting to the white. That's just a case of we need to move our lighting around a little bit. That is just not really too much of a problem. And obviously, like I said, our materials here are just not correct. I want to add more shine to this material. I just want to make it a little bit more red um, as well as I want to add a texture to the lace so it looks more like fabric plenty of things to work on in terms of uh, I need to add the logos as well um, but just just seeing basically what the lighting looks like at the moment and the dimensions of the shoe and that's honestly looking really nice at the moment so so you can see here Underneath the shoe, we've got the shadow of the mesh light, which is above the shoe. If I was to move the mesh light like more horizontal to the left, uh, the light would be casting just like any soft light would or any light in the real world. It would be casting a shadow here instead. And that's what really, really gives off the, the impression that we are, the shoe is sitting on a floor rather than it just sort of floating in the air, uh, which is why it's a better idea. This is much better idea than say taking the product um, rendering it with a transparent background and adding a white background in photo editing unless you were able to add a shadow in photo editing in which case it would look the same but what we're going to do now is um if you're part of the stream you can sit through it as well in terms of the youtube video um, i'm going to skip to when i've just sorted out all the materials um and the logos and stuff so you can see what this looks like fully done um fully rendered so all right Back to the stream everybody so super exciting we've actually managed to get the uh lighting pretty decent straight away to be fair uh maybe a little bit overexposed in certain areas so we're going to work on that right now and um obviously we need to work on these materials they're not given off enough of a the vibe I'm looking for, but I haven't really played that much around with the materials at all, to be honest with you. So, um, first of all, I want to reduce the roughness of this um, and increase the specular a bit and increase the roughness a little bit, just so you can see we get a little bit of the shine going on on the shoe. And I want to do the same here for this. Just a little bit more shine. I want to add a texture to obviously this lace isn't really lining up correct exactly how we intended it to. So let's fix that right now. It's not really wanting to fix it so. There we 
Curious, but same with this farm. Okay, all right, so let's add a fresh texture. Let's increase that. Um, let's add a fresh texture to so that our lace and our night tick are not the same. Let's call it laces. So again, this one, double click here. The name change to laces. Make it black. Change this to laces. So you can delete that cube now. It's just a way to get extra textures in the eye. No, it's probably an easier way to be honest with you. But it's alright. It's not a big deal. Um, and then I want to add. I want to basically add uh, some texture to this lace so it looks more like an actual lace. So I'm going to go into my computer. Nope. I'm going to copy over a fabric texture that I've got that I've used before. As you can see here. I've used this before, so copy that into our textures, copy that in. Uh, we're going to go on our laces one here, and we're going to add a image texture, and along with that a bump node. You're going to need a little bit of UV edit here, UV wrapping here for to make this work. Color into the height, sorry, not the normal. Image texture open. Go to our fabric texture. And as you can see, that's added the fabric there, but it's doing the stretching thing that it usually does um, when you add a texture in. We don't want that. We don't want that at all, so we're going to work on that right now. The way we're going to work on that is we're going to take a model here to that. We're going to take this edge loop, not that one. This edge loop, this edge loop, this edge loop, this edge loop. Mark seam. There you go. Take it. Uh, go tab. Oh, whoops. Give it a second. I've selected everything by accident. Everything. Right, just the lace. Tab. A to select all in edit mode. U. Unwrap. Back into here. And that's not worked. Cool. Um, why is that not worked? I don't know why. We need to add an edge loop every like I'd say how often every every 10 or so of these that should help if not We'll figure out why, and um, we'll deal with that. <laughs> oh yeah, we also need to add the ends of the lace, by the way. We need to uh, add a little thingy to the end of the lace, because you know, Laces do have them. <laughs> oh, 
I mean, we still got this effect, but what I might do, because that actually looks kind of decent, is just kind of leave it. But reduce the strength of it. So it's like that. I might do that. Let's do that. Reduce the darkness of that a little bit. Let's move the this down a little bit. Try to re render and see what it looks like. Alright, so the laces are certainly looking better now. A little bit better. Uh, like I said, I still need to add a, something on the outside. Maybe we up the uh, red a little bit, not so it's not as dark. Of course, we need to add logos. Lighting is too direct at the moment. Let's try there. No, that's still kind of direct, I guess, though, but... Right, so we add logos. Let's do that next. Uh, I feel like you can't really see how it properly looks without the logos, so. Let's do that now, shall we? It's looking good though, it's looking really good. Happy with it. So, uh, let's add logos. Uh, let's do the Nike Air one at the top first. Let's do that. Yep, let's do that. So, let's get the logo up. It's going to be like, I mean, we can change it on our one if we want, but it's going to be that one. It'll be this one. So we'll save this one in uh, where it needs to be. Let's make it logos. All right, so in terms of the best way to do this, first of all, it's the actual, do I already have one called logo? Yeah, I do. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? There it is. All right, um, it's a tab. So we need to actually make the actual tab. So let's do that now. 
Where's it gone? Where's the tab gone? Oh, for some reason, it's over there. I guess that's where the world origin is. We can change that if you want like that. Alright, um, get smaller. Okay, 90 degrees X, 90 degrees 9. Uh, no, sorry. That way. Go back to zero. Um, and then let's whack it in here. Get there. Uh, Alright. Into modeling. Plop it up there. Alright, so in terms of size, width is going to be about this. Height is going to be about this ish. It's very, it's a, quite an estimate. Uh, we're going to add edge loops there, 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 and there too. The individual face. Make this black so we can actually see what we're doing. How much easier is that to actually see when it's clipping or not? And now, as you can see, we've got it lined up, but it's too big, so we're going to change the size. It needs to be about, let's have a look at it actually. More like that, um, I'd say, and the top and down. All right, let's subdivide it. Straighten out the edges. And then let's extrude it out. And let's change anything else that's still outstanding. Should have added UV 
um, UV thingies before this actually, but uh, what? Well, I've forgotten now. Okay, there we have it. Actually, want to make that. I will mark a seam there and make it a little bit smaller. And then we're going to go shading. Make a new plane. New Nike uh, logo. I guess about that wrong, but it's right. Image. Open. Logos. Not in there. Why not? Uh, going to... Oh, because it's not actually in there. Okay. There we go. Plug it into the alpha. Boom. Make this. Like. Uh, logo. Ah, it's actually worked out pretty well off the bat. And there we go. <coughs> So I reduce the roughness so it has a bit more bit of shine to it. That's that. Beautiful. Uh we need to add we're gonna mess with the lighting a little bit more later, don't worry. Honestly the lighting in the look dev is better than our current lighting, which is a bit weird, but um let's add the Jordan one logo, so Jordan logo. That's the one we need. Uh, someone's selling that. Okay. Save image. Jordan one. Uh, this time we do need to go into our photo editing software of choice, which is GIMP. Drag it in. Select by color. Uh, add alpha channel, select by color, remove the background so we just have the white, still got white kicking about, that'll do, and we want to export it as PNG to be honest with you, it's just better, we can delete The JPEG version. Yep, that's deleted. Uh, and then what I want to do is what you want to do. Let's think about this. <laughs> There's two ways we can do it. Um, I really well, well, I'd really much rather try though. Let's try this. <coughs> it will take some playing around though to get the red correct, unfortunately. That is one of the bad parts about it. Let's try this first. Uh, 
All right, so the reds change, but what we now can do is go kind of UV editing. It's like this one gone, Air Jordan red. <coughs> no, that's the wrong photo. All right, um, and then right. Let's add a edge loop here. You wrap it again. And from here, take whoever this side is. Scale it up. Let's take it. Up again. Alright, I see the problem on sec. Alright, so the problem we have now is that we get the scale right, boom, we get it in, in a good position that we're happy with, um, and it looks real nice. Um, we've still got that lever effect going on, it's just imprinted this black logo on it, um, but the there's no worries, we can go through all these pieces, change the UV map so it's not on the logo, so the logo doesn't appear on these pieces, and then that way the red is the same all the way around because using the same material. But as you can see, we've got like multiple logos. So what we need to do is go image canvas size on this, increase the canvas size by a lot larger. Take this, drag this into the middle. Drag this, uh, take this, drag it into the middle. Take all of this, go back on this one. Select none. Uh, let's delete this layer. Just select all of this in a new layer. Uh, oh, new layer. Select all of this. Fill it with its color. Drag it down. Export it again. Change it in Blender. Um, and as you can see, it's so much smaller. But that's perfect because that means that we go UV editing. Uh, we scale it down to the right size. And now, when it's the perfect size we don't get it on the other side as well. So let's do this the other side. It's going to be similar size to this. You're going to rotate you put it there. Want it to be kind of similar like that. that. Yeah, I think it, I don't really know how big it is to be honest. Same with this side. Uh, oh, whoops, Daisy. I need to check a reference image to see. And then what you need to do is just go on all anything that has the logo on, as you can see, and just literally scale down a little, little bit, and then move it to the right. Don't want to change the scale too much because, bear in mind, this is sharing with the lever texture, so you don't want to ruin the lever texture too much. Um, but, but that is what. Also, is another benefit of having it smaller. This logo is smaller in the middle. There's plenty of room on the outside to move any of these that might have the logo on. It looks like the rest don't know, but we can double check just by selecting it. All right, we'll get it in a minute. There you go. Uh, this kind of does, even though it's not really visible, but it's fine. We'll do it anyway, just for the sake of it. Um, this have any yeah this does too must be the other side that we can't see but just for, oh whoops just for the sake of just doing it really whatever this also is clipping with it It's really weird, I don't really know why this is the case, but when you're in UV editing mode, if you want to select the whole part of one bit of the paper mache point, so let's say I want to select, so I've added the edge loop here to split this side and this side into two separate objects, you want to. If you want to select the whole object, you have to select one of the vertices, press L. It's really weird to select all of them, you'd think it'd be A, but no, it's L. So, it's a bit weird, but 
is what it is. And then now, now I want to check where this logo actually goes on the real shoe. So let's have a look. All right, so it's a lot larger than what we got. <clears throat> and it places sort of more horizontal at the back. Closer to this one, to be honest with you. Yeah, more like that, bit further down. Bit further across and bit larger, I'd say. Yeah, I think that looks nice on this side. Obviously, this is in the wrong place. Beautiful. All right. Let's sort out this lighting, shall we? It doesn't look good. It looks all flat and not fun. Overexposed in some places and just not, not ideal, basically. <laughs> uh, I've also got these holes to add down here. I don't know if to add them, though. Am I just being lazy by not? I guess I am, aren't I? Let's just add them. Let's just do it. It won't take that long, I say. I'm just being lazy. Oh, and the laces, the ends, we need to add that. That's that's important. Laces do have ends. Yep, so it looks like it's just basically the front down here. From here. Uh there's just Let's hide this for the time being. Go back and modeling tab. Alright, so this sole just needs to have Why does that have a solidify modifier on it? What the hell? And what's wrong with Oh no, don't worry. It's fine. Mm, is it fine? Yeah, it's fine, it's just Oh yeah, it's just we're in thingy mode. Alright, and then I would say it's about where this goes here we start to have some holes Like that. I don't know if they're circular or not though. If I take this and go like this. Obviously it's very minimal but I guess it does kind of make a difference to the overall look of things. When you're looking at it, so let's do it. All right. Let's just add another one. How many? Are Need to undo before we added them edge loops. Yep, this is good. Yep.
Not actually sure how many to do. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five. Two, three. Let's do this one. Let's do one here. And there. Some here as well. Guess one here as well. I don't really know where it stops, but let's stop there. Give it the same the other side. Same thing, keep doing it. Keep doing what we do. This is inwards. So on there. All I'm doing is control R to add the edge loop three in edit mode to so set the back face X to delete faces select the front face E to extrude backwards just move my mouse backwards and then confirming it and that's that really Well, this is boring. <laughs> uh, yeah. We're getting there, though. They're a bit all over the place, but I think that's kind of the wave that I want to go with. Where do I go up to in that back one? Back here.
Alright, for some reason something let me do no one there, so let's uh let's do a different one. Alright, nice. Let's sort out this lighting, shall we? And also, I want to duplicate the shoe when it's finished. And flip it so we have a uh, second pair. So we can shoot to the bear. Alright. Um, this is what I'm thinking, right? Shading this tab world, which is just a point two five. Open up. Um, yeah. Just give it a minute. Clearly, it's uh. Got a lot to work through. Alright. Then I'm thinking we actually just make this small like, like that. And we make it a lot smaller. <laughs> Ooh. I see. See now we're really, <laughs> now we're really lacking light at the back. Um. So let's duplicate this. Fuck it there. So you basically treat these like they're softbox lighting, soft softbox lights. Um. Just like you would in the real world of photography. So we'll get to. Um, as you can see, that's looking that's looking a lot nicer now. We've just got a little bit more reflection going on. We need to do the lacing again. I've forgotten again. Uh, let's move this away a bit. Not too much, but away a little bit. There you go. Um, just more contrast going on, you know. The lighting's not flat. That's one of the main things, problems you'll have with lighting. It's too flat. Everything is just the same tone all across. Where it looks a lot better when you can get sort of the angle right. Um, and you can get variation in shadows. You see it's darker, this bit white here. Dark here, white here. Dark here, white on top. Um, that really, 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 really helps. All right, let's um, do the ends of this. That's a little bit too long, by the way. Just a bit. Let's remove that edge. Go back to there. Yeah, that's more like it. Because look, the actual lace we've got going on here, it's pretty loose. Like, it's pretty flat. It's pretty, like, far apart. So, like, this is not going to be that much longer, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe we'll make slightly bigger than that, but not, not much, to be honest. Just gonna take this and drag it up a little bit. Uh, wow, that was more than I expected. All right, that'll do. All right, um, and then we actually need to make the little bits that go on the end. So we go modeling, boom, boom. And they're just pretty much. We're gonna make a 
cube. <coughs> Let's go down. Uh, let's have a look at it. Let's go down this way. Let's go down this way. And then subdivide it. And that's going to make uh, similar to what we want. I'm going to add an edge loop there, edge loop there. Let's go out, uh, outwards. Um, and then that's what we got. Obviously, this is looking not correct at all. Shading. Make it the black. Um, and then pop it where it needs to be. Which is going to be tricky, to say the least. So that's good. Now we just need to get this edge here. Take these edges and scale them in. So they taper in at the end. Nice. And we need to adjust there. Give it a save. Seems to have frozen. Basically, we need it to be more like a circle at the end. So, one sec. How do I do that? So this is the lace that we have. Yeah, like that. That's good. Yeah, that's ideal. And then um, I'll probably add an edge loop here. Scale it up so that it drops off earlier. That drops off later, sorry, so it's still thick here. Then you just need to make sure this is still lining up correctly.
the size of four is perfectly fine to be honest. Duplicate this down. Let's get uh, rotate it so it's correct. Alright, nice. Let's check that out. Um, let's remove the let's increase roughness of this. Let's play around with the materials now. Uh, and I also, by the way, wanted to play around with a couple things here. First of all, with 
save that because I need to edit. Oh, <sighs> shit! There we go. Yeah, just need to edit it later. Let's open this. I want to make the saturation lower. Darkness lower two, or oh, I could just go like that. Actually. Go back to before we change the saturation, just go like that. Change this to that. <laughs> It shows them more like darker. Darker vibe we got going on. All right, nice.
All right, let's play around with the lighting and the materials again for a bit. Whoops, we're still in the shading tab. That would make sense. Right, let's try a couple things to make this even better than it already is. Alright, so let's go. It's looking real nice. It is looking nice. I'm not saying it's not. So let's try a couple things. Let's go on world. Let's actually remove the environment texture. Mm, I think it does benefit from having that in there. Yeah, I think it does. A little bit. Not too much. No, point one was good. Point one was good. Are we going to render it now? Let's see what it looks like, all the one shoe. And then uh, see if we can duplicate it and make the pair. Lighting's looking nice, more professional now. Less flat, pretty much. <clears throat> Have to wait and see, though, I think. So, this is the first lighting test, pretty much. Um, this is the f lighting test. This is the first render. This is the... So, we've... We've messed around with the, we've added the logos, we've messed around with the materials and also the lighting, which I'll show you after this. That's looking real nice, I'm proud of that. It's good stuff, I like that, I like it a lot. Okay, so, uh, Okay, so we've uh, added the logos, we've changed the materials, and we've also changed the lighting, which I'll show you in a bit. And this is how we've ended up with. So this is the uh, first way to render a product. This is the clean, infinite white background product page design. I'm going to show you what I did to the lighting to make it look more professional and just better um, right now. But this is what we've ended up with. We're going to save it right now. 
Um, we also was going to render with render it as well with both shoes, but uh, it's going to be the same lighting. So, um, what I basically did with the lighting is I, um, so I'll show you now. So these are the two lighting. I, I duplicated them, so I made two. I made them a lot smaller. Um, you basically work with them as if they're softbox light lights in real life photography. Um, so what I did is I instead of having the large light over the top which was making the lighting all flat or even all around i decided to move the lights to the side and down so on the same level as the shoe which is what creates the more um it makes the lighting less flat so as you can see from here we've got variance in shadow so a little bit darker this bit a lot, a lot brighter here because of the light lighter here darker in this middle bit where the curves are and that's what creates a more uh more of a professional look um, it definitely makes it look a lot nicer. Um, I'm pretty much 90% happy with this. Um, I probably will maybe go in and change the white texture a little bit. Um, it's looking a bit play doh -y, but apart from that, um, it's pretty much there. Um, yeah, so I duplicated the lighting. So one below, one in front. Um, this really depends on your scene and your object and the materials you're using, you need to play around with it. You need to get used to how to uh, position lighting as if it was a, if you've got experience in real life photography, it really helps um, because it's the same concept. The light works in the same way. Just it's duplicate, it's uh, replicated, sorry, in uh, 3D form. So for my particular environment, I uh, created two light boxes, made them a lot smaller, uh, reduced, I actually reduced the um, environment effect in my world tab to point 0.1 in the end so it's barely visible so most of the light is coming from my artificial light that i've created and uh, this is what we have right here so now we're going to move on to the second way to render a product um, i'm going to add another shoe and do the render and show you that on screen um, but now in terms of the youtube video we're going to move on to the next stage which is a more cinematic stylish colored background um, which we'd use on a website banner or a youtube channel or something like that okay um let's duplicate the shoe i'm really excited to see how actually i can make this work i don't even know to be honest with you um while i'm here i'm just gonna fix this front i don't think it looks quite the way we want I'm just going to fix the front of the shoe. I want to just, yeah, the UV mapping on this, change it slightly. That's more like it. Yeah, I like that. Um, and then let's duplicate it. So, damn, it's gonna be difficult. Um, what's the best way to do this? Let's try this in a fresh, fresh thingy real quick. So. Let's just make cube new collection a a uh, UV sphere. It goes like that. Cube like that. Um, and then one more one more collection, which will add a another UV sphere. Alright, so imagine this is our shoe with all our different parts. If we were just to select. I imagine these two are a shoe, boom, 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 boom. And we duplicated them. And trans mirror X global. Mirror X global, mirror Y global. Mirror X global. So it's just Y global. Um, that would duplicate it but the problem is we're kind of beefing with this a lot um, so let's go back if we made a new collection if 
we control C it. Second shoe. Duplicate into there. Move that move that out. Mirror on the Y. Would that do the same thing? Yes it would. Let's do that. Open recent children one. <coughs> Don't need to save that, that's fine. So we're gonna take this 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 what happened oh what happened so again then this and this this Control C that we'll do that bottom so in a second. Right Sh shoe control V. Give it a second. That's quite a lot of work for it to do. Bomb so just place this because I forgot to Select everything in this. Move to the right. Does it look like anything's missing? Not really, to be honest. Mirror Y. There. 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 Go back. To lighting. Ah, let's name this. One shoe. That's, that's a camera for one shoe. Let's duplicate it. Control zero to select this one. Shift F to move it. And let's just change the positioning for the one shoe. Check the lighting. So it's just updating all the lights now because we've added a lot more objects on, into the scene so the lighting's just adjusting to that. As you can see, updating mesh, updating images. So that will be the environment texture and then the images on the logos. And now it is finished. Let's play with the lighting a bit. Let's move the camera out. What would we say we need to do? is just move the light up because obviously it's it's set up to be shining on this shoe and then this shoe's not getting any light just move it up so it's shining on this shoe like it was the other one same with the front just push it up a little bit but we are frozen at the moment so we'll have to wait All right, we've definitely frozen, so so we'll have to close the program. 
it is what it is. Can't remember when I last saved. <clears throat> well, I had both shoes at least, so. Nope, it's doing all the cycles lighting again. Okay. There we go. Right. the lights do their thing might have to increase the uh the amount of light i'm thinking So I think what we do the front's looking nice, the back's looking a bit overexposed, so we move this back. For updates. My computer is uh, struggling with the amount of uh, There we go. Then I would say go shading. If we remove shading, yeah. Object. If we add a little bit more reference to that in terms of this maybe we do the same I'm not really sure <clears throat> just playing around with the lighting now uh, we're pretty much at the, near, close to the end of uh, this first render next step will be the stylish coloured background which will be a separate stream separate video uh, not separate video same video I'm going to make a video with the three ways to product render three styles of product render 
Wow, it really takes a long time to update the lights. Fuck. If you'd like to get a proper look at it, we need to render it full. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to bring up the render that we have originally for the one shoe, which I thought the lighting was really nice on. Really decent. Really nice. Not perfect, but really nice. This is the one we have before. Let's see how this one comes out. So they're obviously straight off the bat the lighting's darker in this one. Let's decide whether we prefer that or not. Ah, I just realized that's fuck. Hmm. Yeah, that is a problem. Alright, one sec. Let's fix that. Blender is really not enjoying this. <laughs> my computer is not enjoying this. Sorry, not Blender. Well, I Blender and my computer. As we have a lot to go on. Or streaming at the same time. Alright, so what I'm going to do, instead of doing that, we're going to go UV editing, which we're already on. Select all in this and mirror Y. No. No. And sec. Let's go back to the object, mirror Y again. And then we're going to mirror the texture Y rather than the object. There you go. And this. Do the same thing. Same on the other side. Mirror X. And just drag it to where it needs to actually be. Perfect. Um, let's take our these.
should have saved before going blender. Ah, uh, please. Please just go through. Should do. That's nice, 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 nice. So while that's updating, might honestly be quicker just to render the image. I'm thinking, I will not lie. So that's looking pretty nice. Um, I would say let's. The front's looking real good. We'll move this away from it. Do it again. Average what time? Watch time of fifteen minutes. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. So we're on, uh, what is this now? This is episode six of this series of the Air Jordan 1s. So we've gone through uh, five, ep five episodes, five live streams of modeling the shoe. And now we're finally on a first stage of, uh, we did do a bit of the laces this stream, but this, we're now on the first stage of the, we're going to render it in three different ways. First way is this way, which is the clean white background. Um, infinite white background product page style render then the second way we're going to render it is going with a colored background it's going to be stylish uh, it's going to be cinematic more that you'd find on a website a banner or YouTube channel art or something Instagram post uh, more stylish um, and then the final way we're going to render it is we're going to put the shoe in a uh, in with a background, a real life photo background, and we're gonna try and make it seem like it is in that environment. The best we can, whether we do that by adding environment texture into the um, into the scene and then blurring the background, or if we actually add an image into the background and line it up correctly with the lighting, whichever way works best, honestly. Let's try to render this. <clears throat> on suicidal thoughts um, people always say life is great and that I mean a lot to them but I just don't see any good reason to stay acting really happy is tiring and I just want the pain to end you know I have no friends I can't afford therapy so calm and I have really bad um, anxiety and I get bullied um, I only have one my, one of my best friends with COVID-19 mm, I can see you're going through a lot and you're struggling and you're feeling very upset
Oh wow, that's looking nice. Uh, we're liking this, looking like the lighting of the individual one, but now we've got the two. And obviously the materials are flipped the correct way. I mean, that lace is kind of beefing me, not gonna lie. The way it's twisted, it's kind of annoying, but yeah, I'm enjoying this. I'm liking the look of this. This is really getting there now. It's really looking nice. <clears throat> All right, let's render this. Yeah, we'll render it. We just rendered it. We'll sa save this. I like the lighting in that one a lot. So if that is number two, uh, and then one thing I'm just looking at right now, <clears throat> just some notes off looking at that render that just finished. Is this sticking out too much? That was one thought I had. No, I've managed to select something behind. Yep, that's nice. Um, this lace. Up. That down. Where is that supposed to be going? Because obviously I didn't actually fix this lace side just yet. As I was trying to get it to work. On the other side, we couldn't see this side yet. There we go. We could probably uh, bring this in a bit. Go just a little bit here now. That's sticking out. That's not sticking out. I should say actually. There, lovely. Right, let's re-render that. Uh, let's just show sure that sticking in as well. There too, and let's check the lighting before we render in case we want to change anything of that too. <clears throat> I think maybe if we just Take this round, or like here. Let's 
So we still get that sort of, uh, we still get the contrast of the shadows with the light, but it's not so much so that the object looks too dark. All right, that's looking real nice. So let's um take it into just a little bit of post production before we finish off for today. Save as, and I'll make this the new logo for uh, the new thumbnail for this section as we now have our own work to display. Um, documents. Uh, so save that there. All right, let's bring it in. Uh, let's add some. Curve modifier. Play around with this a little bit. Nice. Um, let's
little bit of that. Let's uh, do the same to number one, two. Just the solo shoe, which is looking real nice, to be honest. Curves a little bit, a little bit. Let's add some exposure. Let's add some of that fade into it. The other one has. Saturation a bit. I say let's bump it down a tiny bit and let's go to two and bump that down a tiny bit. Saturation. Just the smallest amount. And that's it for now. Uh, I might make improvements later on, but this is what we got right now for uh, the first render of the shoe. So um, this is the clean white background render that I was talking about where you can take a shoe uh, shoot a model and you can put it on an infinite white background so there's no sign of any horizon or any gradient or anything it's just pure white background um, and this is best for like product page images um, definitely almost, if you think about like the add to cart section of a website um, or if Amazon listings that sort of thing this is what it's best for next step is to create something that has more color, more style, and it's more of like a gradient sort of look. Um, so a good example would be something like um, this, something like this, um, and we're gonna have the shoe floating in the air, so it's not gonna be on the floor. Both shoes are gonna be floating in the air, and it's gonna be the background very similar to this. Some nice reflection going on with the background. It's gonna be red though instead of blue, and we're gonna have to set up the environment and the scene and blender completely different to the one that we just did so that's going to be the next step all right perfect hope you have a wonderful day thank you for watching if you did please leave a like if you enjoyed this subscribe for upcoming content